Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for hanging out today. It is Andrew here from Apple Insider, and we're going to be comparing the brand new just released Magic Keyboard against the Bridge Pro Plus, a keyboard that we've already reviewed, both of these guys exclusive to the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros. There is a lot that sets these two apart, so let's go ahead and just dive right into it. Starting off with the Magic Keyboard. The Magic Keyboard is a big deal for iPad Pro users because Apple's other keyboard option, the Smart Keyboard Folio, is just really not up to the task. This too connects over the Smart Connector, which are those three pins on the back of the iPad. Then the iPad Pro will magnetically connect to the rear of the Magic Keyboard. It is dead simple to connect on there, just bring it up and boom, it connects, close it up, use it. Those magnets are nice and strong so your iPad won't be going anywhere. A really unique feature of the Magic Keyboard is that the iPad itself essentially hovers above the keyboard, brings it a little bit closer to your eyeballs, and gives it a really nice look. It also centers the balance and moves it forward a little bit instead of being more towards the back like it is with the bridge. A bonus USB-C port is hidden on the hinge of the Magic Keyboard, perfect for charging and freeing up the other one for accessories or just keeping things clean. Now we are huge fans of the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard. It feels phenomenal to move around. You can easily use gestures such as multi-finger swipes left and right to jump between apps, moving forward to go home, or moving forward and holding to open up the app switcher. It feels great. It's a little bit small and cramped compared to a larger Magic Trackpad on your Mac, but overall it still has the same quality. In fact, you can press it anywhere. It's not haptic feedback like we have on the Magic Trackboards and Macs, but you can actually press anywhere on there instead of just being stuck to the front like you are with Bridge. Before we talk about though, let's talk about our sponsor for this video, Paperlike. When we got our iPad Pros, Paperlike was one of the first things that we put on there. Paperlike is essentially a really nice screen protector. It goes on easily and it gives you a matte finish to your iPad's display, which makes it really easy on the eyes, reduces glare, and is perfect for reading or using Apple Pencil. The installation process is so easy to do. They include everything in the box. It only takes you a few minutes to go around, clean the screen, and squeegee all the little bubbles out. Then you're ready to go. Go ahead and draw, read, whatever it is that you do on your iPad with a nice matte finish. Even better, it doesn't collect fingerprints nearly as much as the glossy display does. So if you read, draw, sketch, take notes, or anything else with your iPad, consider picking up Paperlike. If you want to grab one for yourself, you can find out more at the link down below in the description. Now about that bridge trackpad. There's a big difference between this and Apple's, whereas Apple's you can click anywhere. Bridge is using a springboard design, which means the back of the trackpad is fixed and the rest of it kind of moves in a springboard fashion. So you can press down and click anywhere on the trackpad except for that upper edge. Now the bridge does connect over Bluetooth rather than a smart connector, which does mean it needs to be charged, and there is a little bit of lag. We even seen some hiccups within iOS or iPadOS, where it kind of just gets really excited and scrolls way past what we were trying to do. See, just towards the top of the display just kind of kept going. So there are those small hiccups. The trackpad experience on bridge, while good, is nowhere near what it is on the Magic Keyboard. After using the bridge for the past several weeks and then switching to the Magic Keyboard this week, it is a night and day difference how much smoother, faster, and more responsive it is. And that's just what happens when you pick an Apple design product versus a third party product, especially Bridge, which was essentially based off of an accessibility feature before it came full feature in iPadOS 13.4. Looking at the keyboards, Bridge has a lot going for it though. There is a dedicated Siri key in that lower left hand corner and a full row of function keys toward the top. There are brightness controls, there are keyboard controls, you can adjust the brightness of the keyboard itself, media controls, volume controls, it is very easy to control everything through those function keys, reducing your need to move up to the screen or use the trackpad to get to those features within settings or control center. We do like typing on the bridge, the keys feel good, there's a good amount of key travel, perhaps a little bit more key travel than there is on the Magic Keyboard, but there is a little bit of wobble to them, they aren't as sturdy as Apple's are on the Magic Keyboard. Both of these keyboards are backlit and it is very easy to control the bridge just from that little light bulb icon on the keyboard. Here you can see going through the different levels of brightness, very easy to cycle through, quick and easy to get to. So if you're watching a movie, you can just go ahead and turn that off if you don't want to have those lights on. There is a good amount of light bleed though, so if you're looking at an angle, you really notice how much light is peeking around those keys. Versus the Magic Keyboard here, which is very tight and there is almost no light leak at all moving around the actual chiclet keys. 
Now the downside is you do have to go into settings, into this hardboard keyboard, hardware keyboard menu to adjust the brightness of the keyboard itself. So there is an ambient light sensor, it adjusts automatically, but if you have to manually do it, if you want to turn it off for watching a movie, you do have to jump into those settings to be able to control it, which is kind of a pain. As far as typing on the Magic Keyboard, it is a breeze. It is a great feeling keyboard, a good amount of key travel, very solid keys, though not quite as solid as they are on like the 16-inch MacBook Pro. There is a small amount of key wiggle between the sides, but overall a very, very, very good keyboard, and that we are happy and love to use this every single day. A big difference, again, between the two is going to be the hinge design. So here's Apple's hinge on the Magic Keyboard. You can see it has two different bends to it. There's the hinge at the bottom and then a second hinge there in the middle, which is what gives it that floating, hovering effect and is shifting that weight a little bit more towards the middle of the keyboard itself. But it is a little bit limiting. You can't move it all that much back. Whereas the bridge can go completely 180 degrees. It can go completely flat if you so choose. Whereas the Magic Keyboard, it's limited at about 125 degrees. Bridge is able to achieve that thanks to their custom proprietary hinges. They grip the iPads ever so gently on either side, on both corners. It kind of shifts up a little bit to give a little bit of a boost when it's sitting down on a table. There's grips on the bottom and it holds on very secure, but it's still really easy to take your iPad out when you are done using it or you just want to use it as a tablet. They look great and they hold on very well and it kind of again reduces the size just a little bit because it doesn't cover the entire back edge of the iPad like it does on the smart keyboard fold. Now I know something that you may be thinking right now, which is protection between these two devices. Both are going to offer similar degrees of protection, but it has a little bit of a catch. So the Magic Keyboard, as you can see, covers everything, covers the front and the back and one edge of your iPad. And when you're holding them side by side, they're very similar, but the bridge has an optional back cover. So with an optional back cover, the bridge is a little bit thicker. It's lighter, but a little bit thicker. But that back cover can come off. At that point, the bridge becomes just a little bit shorter or slimmer than the Magic Keyboard is. So it depends on what you want. It'll be a tiny bit thicker if you have that full back protection, but then you don't have, it's not as thin as it would be otherwise. So it's a good option because you have a choice between a little bit thicker device or a more protective device. Both of these keyboards are amazing, but honestly, it's really hard to compete with Apple at its own game. The Magic Keyboard is phenomenal in pretty much every way. Bridge wins out in a few ways, such as that extra battery life and function keys and all that, but it also comes in at a cheaper price. Regardless of which one you prefer, you can grab one down below in the description, and I'd love to know what you guys think. Reach me over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.